Hi everyone and welcome along to the workshop. Today I'm going to be making a desk lamp. I'm using this panel LED. It's designed to go on the kitchen cabinets um, and they work out about £10 each. First of all, just checking that it works and then drawing round the LED panel onto a piece of oak that I bought from local sawmill. In order to get an offset, I'm then just using a washer to draw around it again and as you can see that means I end up with two lines. I need to work out the thickness of this, as you can see it's about 8mm, so what I've done is I've used some foam board, some 10mm foam board, just to make a template for my router. Uh, for my router it needs to be 38mm bigger than wherever, I need to, wherever I'm trying to take material out from. I then set the depth of the router, I'm planning on doing this in a couple of passes, and use the router to hollow out the middle, knowing that the foam board isn't going to let me go outside of the lines that I need to stay within. You'll notice I've not cut out the outside shape of the lamp at this stage, I'm keeping the whole board. This means I've got somewhere decent to rest the sides of the router on. Once I'm happy with that and test the fit with the panel, I can then take it over to the bandsaw and cut out. At this point I'm cutting out just outside the lines so as I've got some room for sanding and so that I don't accidentally get it too thin because I'm looking for quite a thin edge around the LED panel. Although I'm using quite a lot of power tools in this, there isn't actually any reason why you couldn't make this using a jigsaw, using chisels. You know, this is the sort of project that you can tailor to the tools you've got. One of the things I really enjoy with making items for myself is working out how to make it with the tools I have. The next thing I needed to do was cut out this notch. Essentially what it forms is one big finger joint, which is the attachment between this and the upright section of the lamp, which you'll see shortly. And then using a ruler just to set my fence on my bandsaw to cut out another piece of the oak for that upright. I actually find using the ruler much more accurate than using the on bandsaw guide. So you can now see the pieces that I've made. So there's the top of the lamp and then the upright and you can see how that finger joint fits together. It's not particularly complex. In order to make a base for this lamp, I'm going to be using this oak turning blank that I got from Yandels. Again, you could just cut out a circle of wood from something, it doesn't need to be turned on a lathe. Here I'm using the center finder just to mark up the center so that I can attach the faceplate so that I can put this onto my lathe and round it out. The first step once it's attached onto the lathe is just to true up the blank, make sure that it's actually circular around the point that I ended up with as center. I'm just using a square carbide tool to do this. Looking at the blank, I felt that it was actually quite a lot too thick for the base on this. So here you can see me just using that tool again to take the thickness of the blank down. I was probably removing about 15 millimeters off the thickness at this point. Once the thickness is correct, the final pass gives me a nice smooth surface. At this point, all of the parts are cut out so we can turn our attention to some sanding. The first thing I did was use this belt sander just to go over all the parts and you'll see that I'm also using it to round over the corners, do some final detail shaping on the top of the lamp piece. And then also using the belt sander to create the right angle for the upright. And after this it's onto the random orbit sander to create a finished surface on all of the pieces. In order to get that nice finish, it's important to use a range of sandpaper grits. So in this instance, I used 80, 120, 180, 220, 320, and 400 grit. I perhaps should have done this before all of the sanding, but the next stage I did was to route out a channel for the cable to run down the main upright of the lamp. I've just used some bits of wood taped to my bench to give me a guide for that. Um, following that, I then drill a hole in the end for the cable to pass through between the channel and the head of the lamp. Having clamped the two pieces down to the bench, I then use a pilot bit to start a hole through the finger joint and then come back with a larger bit to make this the right size for the pin that I'm going to use to attach the hinge. So now it's time to start with the final assembly of the light. First thing to do is to stick the LED panel in. I'm just using a pencil there to line it up. Um, I'm then going to use some milliput, which is an epoxy putty, to fill that channel now that I know exactly where the cable sits in it. For milliput, I'm sure it's the same with a lot of these epoxies. You cut equal sized pieces of the putty itself and the hardener. 
and then the task is to just smoosh that together until it's all thoroughly mixed through. It's a lot easier to do if your workshop isn't cold, you can see how hard I'm having to work to get that to blend to start with. Basically just keep moving it and with your hands it will smooth out. What I've done rolled out a long piece and I'm just pushing it into that groove over the top of the cable. It doesn't really matter if it's particularly neat as long as that groove's completely filled then it will be all dealt with by me coming back with a sander. The milliput takes three or four hours to set up so whilst that's happening I can get the base over to the drill press and get a hole drilled through for the cable. And then flipping the base over I can then use my router to create a channel so that the cable has a way of escaping from under the base. I don't really want to put feet on this so I need to create this channel. Once the milliput's set up, I uh, come back to it with the random orbit sander again, starting at the 80 grit just to remove any of the excess putty that's over and above the channel itself. It leaves a really nice clean line around the edges, but again I went back through with all the other grits that we talked about earlier, so as to make sure that the finish matched with all of the other parts. There's now only two parts left to do, the first of which is to screw the base onto the rest of the lamp. Now you'll see here that I'm struggling a wee bit with it. The angles meant that there wasn't a really nice way to clamp it. If I had had a better option for clamping it, if I'd thought it through, I maybe would have taken the approach of gluing this. But we got there eventually. Just required a bit of patience and a bit of juggling. Final task was to get some mineral oil on the wood to give it some protection. Um, I quite like what it does to the grain as well, without changing the colour too much. This may have been easier if I'd been able to do it with all of the pieces in separate parts, but that wouldn't have worked with filling the cable groove with epoxy. So it just took a bit of time to get the oil into all the little corners on the lamp, made use of some cotton buds and some different bits of rag to make that happen. So there we have it, one completed lamp. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. The entire thing cost me less than £25 in parts, and I'm not sure I would have got a lamp that I like quite as much for that much money. I also think it's a fantastic addition to my upgraded desk space. Thanks for watching. I hope this inspired you or maybe give you ideas of things you could create for yourself. If you want to see more of my projects coming up soon, please click on the subscribe button. I'm planning on having projects out most weeks for the foreseeable future.